dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Amelia Lee. One person is dead after a house fire in Pulaski County. Officials with the Somerset Fire Department say they were called to Harvey Street today for a fire. They say crews saw smoke from a single family home and were told there was possibly a person inside. Firefighters found the victim and pulled them from the home. They were pronounced dead at the scene by the Pulaski County Coroner's Office. The names of the victim have not yet been released. Also in Pulaski County, a death investigation is underway after a body was removed from an over an embankment. The Somerset Fire Department says the Pulaski County Coroner's Office asked for their help removing the body. It was found near the 1300 block of Highway 3057. That's near Sinking Creek. The person's name and cause of death have not yet been released. The coroner's office is still investigating. Earlier today, people from near and far made their way to Holy Trinity Catholic Church to remember Senator Johnny Turner. Turner was a Harlan County native who served his county as an attorney. He later held a seat in the House from 1999 to 2002 and eventually became a state senator in 2021. The visitation was yesterday where we spoke to Senator Philip Wheeler about the man behind the public service. He was in many ways both a friend, uh, a mentor, and a confidant. Um, he loved the hills just like I do. He truly was a, a fascinating man. Senator Turner's f burial followed the funeral at the Rest Haven Cemetery in the Keith community. We had a day similar to what we should be seeing this time of year with those temperatures in the 60s. And as we're going into the overnight hours, we'll continue to see that trend play out. But let's look at that satellite and radar first. Mostly clear, a little bit of clouds here and there. But overall, it's having these overnight hours to look quite nice. And as we take a look at those current temperatures, we're seeing that we are at a range of temperatures between 43 degrees and 54 in Monticello. So definitely a cooler afternoon as we're heading into the overnight hours. And let's take a look at the overnight temperatures, not changing much from what we're expecting right now. We're seeing 39 degrees for Manchester, 39 for Irvin, and as we're heading into Somerset, 41 degrees as well as 41 in Monticello. So a cooler afternoon, but similar to this time of year. And as we're going into Sunday, here are the hour by hour forecasts starting at that 52 degree mark at 9 a.m., getting up to that high temperature, 76 at 3 p.m., and then cooling down to 66 by the time 9 p.m. rolls around. I'll have your ARH seven day forecast in a couple of minutes. Amelia? Thank you, Megan. I'm looking forward to some of those mid 60s coming soon. As the race for the White House continues, the presidential candidates focused largely on North Carolina on Saturday with the countdown to Election Day now just over two days away. CBS News correspondent Christiane Bienavides is in Atlanta, where Harris is leading one of several rallies. We win this state. We're going to win the whole ball game. Yeah. Both former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris rallied in North Carolina Saturday, which Democrats have not won since 2008, but it's been a close call ever since. It is about the importance of lifting people up and not trying to tear them down. I have come today with a message of hope for all Americans with your vote on Tuesday. I will end inflation. I will stop the invasion of massive numbers of criminals that have come into our country. Polls are tight in most swing states that could sway Tuesday's election, including Georgia. I already voted. I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. <laughs> Hopefully they, they both have good intentions of bringing the country together. I think that should be one of the main things in keeping America first. This Atlanta rally is one of three the vice president is holding across battleground states. And Georgia, we have an opportunity in this election to finally turn the page on a decade of Donald Trump. 
as the race for the White House enters its final hours, Harris is expected to make multiple appearances in Michigan Sunday, while Trump is set to campaign once again in Pennsylvania. Considered the top price of the seven battleground states, Harris will be there on Monday. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Atlanta. A source familiar with Harris's plans says she will appear on Saturday Night Live tonight after arriving in New York earlier in the evening. Kentucky has now broken the record for early voter turnout two days in a row. Kentucky Secretary of State Michael Adams reported 225,000 people voted early on Thursday. That's a major increase compared to numbers from the first day of early voting in 2020 and 2022. Of those voters, 54% were registered Republicans, totaling 121,000. Meanwhile, 40% were registered Democrats with 89,000 voters and 7% were registered independents or others. That was amounting to 14,000. Looking at overall registration, Republicans make up 47% of the electorate. Democrats account for 43% and independents or others represent 11%. Today was the last day of in-person, no excuse early voting in Kentucky. WYMT's Caroline Mueller tells us about the turnout at one polling center. Dozens of folks came out to make their voices heard in Perry County as they made their way to the polls to cast their ballots. Gary McIntyre is an election clerk. He says turnout is different for this election compared to the primaries. We're having a pretty good crowd out here. Actually, we're about five times higher than what we were in earlier in May during the primary. McIntyre says he is seeing more first-time voters this election compared to last year. We've had, I think we had one new voter last year that, that I saw all year, but we had, we've had, I think, about 15 new voters, first-time voters, uh, just in these, the three days that we've been operating here. He says he is happy to see the big line at the Perry County Library voting location, saying it has kept him busy. We're managing to keep the lines down a little bit. Uh, we probably had about 15 or 20 in line yesterday, but yeah, really, really good turnout. Yeah. We're really impressed with the turnout. But with early voting, he says they are able to get people in and out in less than 10 minutes on the official election day, November 5th. Usually get in and out pretty quick, and it really cuts down on the, on the congestion and the lines during the, you know election day. You know, we spread it out. And I'd like to see uh, about nine days of early voting, actually. Yeah. He wants to remind folks that on Election Day, as long as you are in line by the time polls close at 6 p.m., you will get to cast your vote. In Perry County, Caroline Mueller, WYMT, Mountain News. If you need to check where to vote or see a sample ballot, you can go to govote.ky.gov. And as the election approaches, folks have been visiting the polls. But how does your vote count? WYMT spoke with Ann Sismar. She's a political scientist and professor at Eastern Kentucky University. She explains the Electoral College, saying it's a system where citizens will indirectly vote for the presidential candidates. But what you're really voting for on the ballot is a slate of electors. 48 states use a winner-take-all method which means that even if a candidate theoretically won by, you know, like one, two, a hundred votes within that state, they would get all of the electors for that state. Only Maine and Nebraska divide this out by congressional district. All the other states use this as a statewide winner-take-all system. Kentucky has eight electoral votes. Sizemore says folks should still go to vote, especially for the local elections, which have more of a direct impact on day-to-day -day lives. And another candidate has been endorsed in the race for the 29th Senate District seat. Tanner Hesterberg has been endorsed by the Conservative Caucus of Kentucky. Hesterberg, who was once the sports director at WYMT, is one of 11 write-in candidates for the seat. The caucus shared a statement on Facebook. It reads in part, quote, We're proud to endorse Tanner Hesterberg as a write-in candidate for the 29th State Senate District. Tanner embodies the mountain values we hold dear hard work, integrity, and community. He's no stranger to the unique challenges our region faces, and he has the vision and tenacity to ensure we're not just heard, but represented at the state level, end quote. 
Stay with us. We'll be right back.